Welcome to the RCB Sports Show. I'm joined here by Seamus Hayes and Nicholas Wren and all things Jair, Claire GAA. Um, last Sunday, Seamus was um, was a, a tough day for the Clare Ladies Football Intermediate. Uh, they were defeated by one point against Kiltair. Very close game. Um, a great game there by Fidel and Marin, as usual. Seamus, looking at the game, they could have won it, couldn't they, Seamus? Yeah, they could have won it, um, but I suppose the, the the regrets that have will be concerning the first half, when they when they struggled to cope with a, a powerful Kildare side, a very strong, physically strong Kildare side. You know, uh, I know there are always regrets when a team loses, and uh, Clare people will be saying, "Why didn't we play in the, uh, for the full for the full part of the game like we played the last quarter?" Because I. There was only one team really in the last quarter as Clare thundered forward, mm. but they just ran out of time. Yeah. And even at the very, very end, Fidel Mamernon, you know, a free from around 45 yards just dropped short. It was on target. It was bang in line with the black spot in the crosshair, but it just came up short and the final whistle went, the hooter sounded and it was all over and there was heartbreak for the girls, um, you know, to lose an all-Ireland final. Not too many get to all-Ireland finals, number one. Mm. And when you when you get there, you want to try and win it, you know. And yeah. um, they had had a couple of great battles with Kildare during the year, but this is a powerful Kildare team. We have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, and I know there'll be regrets from a Clare point of view. There'll be regrets over the second goal, which came as a result of a misplaced attempted shot kick out, which was intercepted uh, and, and and stuck back in the net. I suppose those things happen, and it's happened to recover from blows like that, but. Uh, they're definitely uh, 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 great signs for the future. And people like Fidel Mamarn and Chloe Maloney, you know, these players, hopefully that they will uh, continue to commit for, uh, to, to, to the scene for another year. And maybe a few more will come in, uh, you know, when the local championships have started. Uh, the local ladies football championships have started as a series of games this weekend. Uh, and hopefully a few players will come to the fore to be able to join that panel. So, but for now, it was disappointing to lose by a point. Having won the Camogie the previous week, it would have completed a great week. But, you know, there, there has to be winners, I suppose, there has to be losers. And unfortunately for Clare, they were on the wrong side of this one. Well, what, what we're looking at coming out of this too is that the fact that it's going to bring um, a lot more girls some confidence going in that they can play in Croke Park because to, that, that's the goal, to play there in Croke Park. And I think whether they won or lost, they're still making a massive impact uh, across the county there for the girls just to be able to, to look forward that they can do it. You know, leave, uh, they paved the road now, you know. That's correct. They, they have opened the door. And, you know, we have to be, uh, we, we have to accept the fact that it's a huge, huge uh, change, I mm. suppose, uh, to have to play in Crow Park in front of a huge crowd. Yeah. You know, the noise in Crow Park last Sunday was 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 massive. And Claire... Yeah wouldn't have played in front of that type of a crowd before. So, yeah. you know, that would have created its own, uh, I suppose, nervous situation for players and to have taken them a while to settle. And that was obvious in the opening quarter in particular where uh, Clare, you know, were struggling to find their feet and to kind of settle into a rhythm. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things involved. It's great and it's fantastic to be in the situation where you're playing in Crow Park in front of several thousand people. Uh, but, you know, that takes its toll as well. And I suppose, uh, having been there now, it's something that the girls uh, will benefit from. They'll take a lot out of it. Uh, and hopefully that when they do get back, and I have no doubt, they will want to get back there as quickly as possible because they will have, in a bad result, they will have enjoyed the experience. So they will want to get back as quickly as possible. And uh, it can only do good for the for the game and for the conference of those players. Yeah, especially one point in it, it might you might look at that and say, "God, we could have done it," but it's a respectable score. It is a respectable score, you know. It is, and it's a good score. Like two eleven, two ten is a big score. Mm -hmm. You know, often the 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 score line would just be a few points for either side. But the standard of ladies football uh, is high. There's no doubt about that. And yeah. anyone that watched all the games last week, you know, would have seen that. Uh, and it is another level up to what we saw in the senior game after between Dublin and Kerry. Uh, it's another level, or maybe two levels, to get up to that. And that's where Kildare now find themselves next year, having to, having to kind of cope with the, the power of the Dublins and the Kerrys of this world. And, uh, you know, that's another year, you know, 
the CZ Sabre another year uh, may be of greater benefit to their to, you know, to learn how to cope with that type of a standard. Yeah. You know, we can look forward to next year and it'll bring forward many other stars too as well. And they'll be back. They'll be back and be back with all guns firing as well. Um, Nicholas. Yeah, there's no there's no doubt about that. And you know, yeah. they have to put it behind them. They have to put it behind them now. The first yeah. rounds of the county champ the county championship are on this weekend. Yeah. So they're all back with their clubs this weekend. And it will be hard for those girls, you know, to maybe come down from the high of last Sunday of playing in Crow Park in front of several thousand people to playing in front of a hundred or two spectators uh, as they get the club scene you know, underway. But uh, you know, that's that's the, the, the life of a GA player, be it in men's or ladies sports and you know the the the, the size of the of the crowds vary from week to week and the atmosphere varies from week to week. And we've seen that with the club holding and football championships, you know, the mm. after a kind of a quite enough first round interest is really shot up now and there's a lot of crucial games over the next two or three weeks so it'll be the same for the ladies this weekend uh, as they get their season underway yeah and not like professional sports they're fueled it's an amateur sport and they're fueled by the passion and the, and the parish and the community they're not fueled by the paycheck as as other sports do you know and they're not fueled by brands it's raw they go out in the field that's what I love about the sports GA they, they go out there and they play and there's no there's no sugar coating it, you know. It's just just the grass, the players, and the game. You know, that's what I love about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you're you're dead right. Like you know, the it's it's, uh, it's playing for the the guy down the road, and mm. you know, to have been the big talking point for the last day or two throughout the parish, uh, wherever you're from, you know, your local parish, they'd be talking about the opening round of the championship this weekend and how they might do, and yeah. you know, there'd be a lot of girls playing in this that can only dream of being on a county team. Yeah. And this is where it starts. Uh, you know, this is where it starts for them, and they could be the stars of a Nala and a win in a couple of years' time. So, uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, involved and a lot of a stake, I suppose, really. But uh, that's the scene. It's the club scene now from now on, and hopefully, uh, teams will give good accounts of themselves, and they will. I've no doubt we'll have some great games. I've no doubt in the world we'll have some great games. And going forward, uh, Nicholas, we had last week. We had another round. Of uh, the championships in the hurling, and again, also obviously more shocks to the system there. Um, unfortunately, uh, on your side of the country, as hard as it is to say it, but Ina Kilnamona defeated again, and now they look there down and fourth on the table. Kilmaley sitting there in their group anyway with Scarif and, yeah. um, and of course there were wins and defeats across the weekend as well. You know, um, first of all, what's your feeling? Not yeah, rub salt first, into wounds, but yeah, well. first, first and foremost, I think it's a discredit to Scarif to say it was a shock because it absolutely wasn't a shock. Yeah. You know, Scarif for the common team, yeah. they have uh, made they won the intermediate a few years ago, they came up oh. and and then that was backed up by an under 21. They won the under 21, which is a huge bonus to them, like and they fade off that thing. They have young players coming in there 18, 19, 20 years of age as well. Joining that panel, like uh, uh, which was already strong enough to win intermediates and do and, and to stay up at senior. Mm. So I, you know, the sh- I, I wasn't a shock to me. It was a disappointment, obviously, but not a shock by any means. I, I, I the fa- killed the one about three to one. I killed the one about three to one on. Mm. I, 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 you know, I, I wouldn't back against my own club, but I mean that was a fantastic, that was a fantastic. Um, Price, I couldn't believe that the bookies would get would be so far wrong to give that kind of a price. But uh, you know, it, it it was a good game by all accounts. It was frustrating if you're an any kind of morning man. But uh, you know, the goals we copped up, and you know, Patrick Bryan scored three three goals, and there were three good goals, and they were scored on mirrors. You know, and uh, Mark Rogers obviously uh, got a goal from a penalty in in the very early on set the trend. Patrick Ryan got a goal in the second half, which was probably, it was a stray pass from Lady Kildamona Prep. When Lady Kildamona were at their at their peak, I suppose, in the game, they reeled off eight pints in a row, six before half time to get him back to three pints, and 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 two after half to get it back to one point. Mm. Uh, and and soon after, then that mistake was made, and uh, and, and, it, and it lifted Scarif. And, uh, you know, Scarif for full value for their win. They had a you know, huge players there, Mark Watchers, Patrick Drain, Patrick Crotty, you know, they have uh, uh, Ke- Ke- Keelan Hartigan and Connor Downs, I thought were 
you know, they they ran they ran the show at midfield. You know, they went out for for a period that happens. You know, Michael Scanlon is full has been around. Uh, it seems like forever they had the full back line, cheek tough, uh, nothing past them, you know. Uh, so uh, we didn't get a goal, yeah, and we didn't look like we wanted to get a goal. We think we 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 were kind of going Limerick style, as if you can win a, a game from the middle of the field by long range points, like, and 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 that doesn't really work at club level. You need to get in and get goals, and we we didn't. We came close late on, but uh, you know throughout the balance of the game. It was really every man shooting, you know. Sean Wynn gave an exhibition for Ryan Kilmona. I think he's a shooing now yeah. uh, to, to, for the Clare panel. Like, you know, he was he was just uh, magnificent, as was Conor Hagerty, you know, David Fitzgerald, you know, the county men. Uh, but uh, Shane Vaughan got a couple of, you know, uh, Shane Woods, they are they they all did well like but four goals you can't you're not going to win a game when you let four goals and eighteen points in like you know uh, eighteen points okay but four goals you know and it looked like the floodgates could open completely like at some at some stages of that game like so you know full credit to Scarif a great win I think Limona put up for I suppose twenty minutes of that game they were absolutely excellent and it happened, yeah. and I have to say that as well like they they played brilliant stuff the points they reeled off to get themselves back into a position where they could challenge for the game, but uh, this, I suppose that when they copped up that late, that second half goal, their their challenge fizzled out, and and their year f- uh, has fizzled out as well. Almost certainly, you know, at this stage would take a miracle because uh, they have the head to head against Gareth and the head to head against Bellier. So at this stage, they can only I think uh, get four points, and I, it wouldn't be enough, you know. So it's back to the drawn the drawn board for them, fortunately, and you know there's still. Uh, it was probably not expected to find a killer more, given the fact that they were in the county final only, only a couple of years ago. But, yeah. but uh, I, I'm not too sure. They don't seem to play for me. Uh, play for that for that parish. That's my feeling. You know, uh, not all of them, of course. The likes of Sean Ryan, Conor Higgins, as I said. But yeah. uh, you know, you've got to leave it all out there. Mm. Not just for twenty minutes. You've got to give it a hundred percent. You've got to back up your teammates. You've got to play as a team, and yeah. I think that's lacking somewhere along the line. Whereas Scarif, you could see how, the intensity from Scarif. You can see what they that they wanted to win the game, no matter what. They were willing to do anything. They they were on the borderline a couple of times with tackles. They were not dirty. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying what I'm saying is they gave it a hundred percent of what they had, mm. uh, uh, and you have to credit that. And you have to admire that. And you could see Donald Maloney in the sideline. You could see Mark McKinnon as a manager. You could see Jim Minogue, Jill Rogers, Donald Maloney all getting behind that team yeah. from the line. You could see, and that's and when that comes in, uh, you know, they 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 they, 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 put, they power on, and that's what they did. Like so, congratulations to Scarif, and you know, it's great to see Scarif back. You know. I, I don't mean at the expense of any kill the border, but I mean it's great to see Scarf yeah. coming back in. Nineteen ninety-six they won the county final. Like I I think that's the year that they uh, uh, um that Jerry Rogers hit the post and they would have won the county final the width of a post uh, denied him a county championship back then. So I'm happy that they they Jerry Rogers is still there and very much involved, you know, yeah. and Mark McKinnon who would have played that game as well. So Kudos to them, like you know, well done and upwards and onwards. Can the morning, I can the morning have to regroup now and try and get something over the last two games, and uh, you know, that'll that'll be their year as as regards senior league. You know, which we have a we're having a good year in the club in general because our minors are going well, our intermediates yeah. and our junior boys. So it's not all. It's not all. Still a bit of for in the gloom without yeah. us. Seamus, did you get to any matches the weekend in the championship? Yeah. I did. I saw that Scarif Heineken in the morning game on Friday evening. Uh, I was at the Fetal uh, Clare Castle game on Saturday. I was at the Crusine uh, uh, game with, with O'Callaghan's Meadows on Saturday. So uh, I was at the Aerog and brought for a game on Sunday. Uh, tight, tight games, a uh, lot of passion. Uh, you know, I heard Nicholas making a point there, a valid point, you know, about how fired up. Uh, Donna Maloney was on the sideline uh, for Scarif and he, he's a key man there. Um, you know, the, the, the passion that was shown, Scarif uh, highlighted this. They wanted to win the game. And uh, yeah. the, I, I don't know, 
to, it's a big debating point for me um, across the board. You know, a lot of clubs have coaches and trainers from outside their palaces, you know, who come in and uh, let's face it, the effects be effects, so who come in and who are paid to do a job. But yeah. nothing beats uh, the passion of the uh, of the people from your own place, in my opinion. When you look at the GA club scene, you know, nothing beats being from that place because you'll have the you'll have the passion of that parish, uh, yeah. you know, and, and and you'll show it. And I think that's a a big factor uh, for the GA. But um, th that's you know beside the point. You know, we've a, we've had a lot of great games last week. I suppose before the ball was popped this year, you know, lads would have been speculating as to who the likely winners would have been, and you had uh, the Aerogs and you had the Ina Killamonas all being mentioned. Uh, you know, to me, Scarif and Fiegel have come up strong. Uh, they've both, they're both unbeaten. They both have two wins under their belt. Uh, and it's not that long ago, only a few years ago, when we were uh, listening to people kind of saying that Holland was dead in East Clare yeah. and that the Palacers were struggling to survive. You know, and it's not that long ago when Scarif struggled to field an ad one adult team. Now they have three adult teams. You know, it just shows you what the way the, the way things can turn and they like they won one, not no sorry not not one but two under twenty one titles last year. Their main team won the A yeah. championship and their second team won the C championship. So you know I know they did it in, uh, in partnership with Ogunolo, but the majority yeah. of those players were from Scarif, which is the bigger populated area out there, uh, and you know that has been huge for that club. It's been absolutely huge. Uh, you know, and they've now put themselves in serious contention to be in the knockout stage, as have Fiegel, as have Tanlara. We've always argued for years about the talent uh, and the amount of talent that's in Tanlara, but they've never seemed to deliver. My God, are they delivered this year? You know, they're totally focused, uh, looking at their performances today, this year, led by the outstanding John Conlon, uh, the Galvin brothers. Uh, it's, and it's great to see Colin Galvin back. Mm. Uh, you know, playing from the start. You know, he's been dogged by injury over the last two or three years. One of the greatest hurlers, I suppose, uh, to come out of the county in modern times. Uh, but you know, he's been dogged by injuries. But he's he played the he he played from the start last week, and Ian Galvin is hurling well. So Fanara are going to be there there with a the shout. Yeah. Uh, Ballier have bounced back after the opening day shot. They won the last two games. There's a huge game, huge game coming up next week. Ballier against Gareth. Yeah. Uh, because whoever loses that uh, may be, may be, uh, or may have a few anxious moments before the before the final uh, groups or the final positioning are known in that group. It's Bellier's last game yeah. uh, in the group. They will have the buy -in and last time Scarif will still have another have another game. Uh, it would be a major miracle now if if uh, I kill them all. They got back on the hunt, but if mm. the, I t their hope is that they will win their last two games. Obviously, that's a must. Yeah. That the others will score their way, and that three teams uh, at least would finish uh, uh, on level terms, and then to come down to the score difference. Yeah. Now the, the score difference will have to improve. There's no doubt about that. Mm. Uh, but if you win, uh, you know you're improving your score difference all the time. So the the, the games on Friday, Saturday, Sunday week are huge, huge, and for all for for three to four groups. The games that weekend are the final games in the, mm. in the groups. For the group of five, there'll be another round after that. But there is so much to play for now in the next week or two. And, uh, injuries will have a big bearing on it. And we, we're hearing that Tony Kelly uh, may be out of the action, out of action next day. Uh, and if he is, that would represent a massive, massive blow to yeah. Bellier. And obviously all their hurling fans will be hoping that he's, that he's not because he's such a talent and he's so important to their hurling. Uh, oh, but he could be out. Tony Quinn, uh, who are another of the teams that were being tipped mm. to be in contention, who were beat last week uh, by Newmarket. They're down Brian Taylor, who's out for the year with a crucial injury. They're down Callum Hassett, who got a serious leg injury in the opening round. Uh, and the next day, it looks as if they'll be down Peter Duggan, who was sent off last week. Uh, you know, and unless he can get that card overturned, uh, he'll be an absentee. And for uh, any club, to yeah. miss your, to, to be without your two county men, uh, mm. you know, your senior and county men, would be a massive, massive uh, uh, blow. So it puts the pressure really on Tony Quinn now uh, yeah. as well. And uh, they need to win or to get to bounce back. So um, 
there's an awful lot to play for yet in this championship. Because you've been hearing too as well that Tony is injured. I mean, there, there, there's lads, there's a lot of injuries across the board that seem to be popping up as well in the championships. But that one um stands out the most because Belly have have lost quite a few lads that they had last year in their county champions team um through immigration and stuff. So now losing Tony is really going to put a bit of pressure um on the squad going into Scarif's game. Do you think there, Nicholas? Yeah, it, uh, Tony Kelly is a huge loss to Belly, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and a huge loss to us people who love to go along to Cusick Park or wherever and see the great hurlers and you know, to see Tony Kelly, especially in Cusick Park, playing for Belier is a sight to behold, you know, any time well worth the entrance fee. So yeah, a huge loss, a huge personal loss for Tony to be injured again. Hopefully it'll heal up quickly and he get back onto the playing field soon. You know, we wish him the very best. You know, I suppose I have to mention that Aidan McCarthy was injured as well and didn't play for any kill Mona and and that was a loss. But uh, you know not making excuses. It was it would it, you can't make excuses. You have fifteen on the field. Which you know, there is injuries to, to players and then there seems to be a lot of injuries. We've been down this road before about this these injuries. Uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, for those guys like, you know, Ryan Taylor, huge loss, uh, such as, you know, and I think the injury he got was unnecessary. I think it the you know the word is that, you know, the, the, he he when they were playing Kilkenny, he 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 was he was targeted. And uh, and um, and that's and that's a shame, like for any player to do that to another player. But that's that's the way it is. So losses will come. There'll be more injuries. You know, Seamus mentioned uh, there, John Condon. If you were t- if you were coaching the young fella beyond in the field today, you needn't look past John Condon. What that man gives to the game, uh, uh, in this at this hour of his career, still yeah. he scored nine points last week. He was colossal. He was back in defence. He was up in playing the back in defence. That's the type of hard time I, that I want to see my club bringing into my club, like or any club for that matter, like you know, and into the county team. He's he's just. Uh, uh, I, I think John Connell has been the greatest player hurler of all time, and that's saying an awful lot. You know, you know, okay, Tony Kelly, fantastic hurler, but I mean, for heart and guts and sheer determination, he's been doing this since 2009. He's still in 2023, given his whole heart. To, uh, from like we bowed out against Kilkenny, you know, a lot of players licking their wounds. John Connell puts on the Lana jersey, and what do you see? You see the, the whole man comes out again like in him. And that's that's what he's brought to Clare for the last uh, for the last 14, 15 years, like so uh, you know, he's a great role model for me, you know. But um it's been an interesting championship so far, you know, with, with teams that we thought might do a little bit better and teams that we weren't too sure of. You know, New Market for me and Fiedler are the two teams that really have shown up. There, like obviously, Sarah is the obvious one, but Dumarket and and uh, and uh, Fiegel for me, <clears throat> I've really shown up. Like you know, and Broadford are, are battling well there as well. They were very unlucky against their own, you know, and they need a result now the next day. The next day out is going to be very interesting. Like, and they have progressed a lot too as a club. You know, came up to, from intermediate as well. Like, and they have kind of cemented themselves in there now, and they're getting results. And and you know, so those are the teams that are sending out for me so far this year, probably the teams at the beginning of the year, you know, and you've got to hand it to Bellier. I see you're wearing the Bellier colours there, but <laughs> you have to hand it to Bellier. You know, what they're doing again, like, they got they got uh, roasted in the first game and that can happen, like, but then the way they could bounce back, you know, and they've put themselves into a great position again. So I wouldn't write out Bellier, write off Bellier, you know, Obviously, Tony Kelly is going to be a huge loss, but they did it before without Tony. You must mm. remember that as well. Like. Mm-hmm, yeah. So, you know, but the speedy recovery to Tony and 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 Ryan Taylor and and and, and Ed McCarthy. You know, we want to see them. They were the fellas we were, we were going to we were going to see them all. Like, but they're yeah. they, they're the pluses, like you know. Would well, be great. I mean, maybe there's a possibility with with Gary Brennan coming back into the scene there, like for. Would, but I'd say it's putting a bit of pressure, yeah. like you're putting lads in dual players. Uh, um, yeah, it's kind of it's hard to come back into the club uh, when you've been out a while, and it's hard. Um, 
I, I'm sure Gary, what I'm saying is like he's coming to the end of his career. He's had a stellar career, especially at football. You know, you know, yeah. absolutely brilliant player for Ireland. Everything he's done, everything in football, like you know, and he's done it with with Bellier. He's been a huge asset to them, you know. But they will need him. Hopefully, he'll be able to come back and he'll be and he'll be fit and you know he'll make a big contribution as well. Like he would, he would fill a lot of the void for certain. You know, a player of his and you know his experience as well. And Gary, Gary is another guy who gives it everything when he goes out. He doesn't go out for the, you know, for for, for a look in. He, he gives it everything. You know, super, Gary, super. Gary's presence. I, I, I seen it last year when Sunday Gabra beaten and Gary came in. His presence on the pitch, uh, Alone, yeah. is 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 just. It would be yeah. similar to John Conlon when he's there, with he, because yeah, he was a one. He's a one off. Yeah, yeah. He Gary That's Brennan right. was a one off. He was an extraordinary player. Yeah, you know. He was in, he, how many games did he pull out of the fire for Clare and the football? How many did he? I, will we ever forget the run he made against Torres in the Munster Championship? You know, and it said bought him all the way to the Oral. That yeah. run he made when, when Torres started the game one, he ran the into the pitch. Nobody, nobody, the best that Torres had, and they had great undercoated the players could stop him and yeah. burying that. But I never forget that. It was a, you know, one of the great days in Clare Hurling, you know, for Ballier, like, you know, yeah. but for everybody in Clare Hurling as well. It was a really, you know, so it, and there's been great moments like that for Gary. I remember him above against Westmead when in 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 the in the championship game, and at the end of the game, there was only I think there was only a point in this Clare were up, and he leaped into the sky and picked you know back in the defence yeah. and 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 won the ball and won the game. You know, moments yeah. like that you'll never forget. There was other great moments like you know, and the men are still playing. Well, there'll I'd... be more moments. It will be, yeah. And I, I we were just wanted to mention too while I have Seamus still here with us. Um so last weekend you now we had our championship, but going down to junior C, I wanted to give a mention out to Kilkey because I was there myself uh, in the bin, in the bench and Kilkey went up against Kilanina um about uh, last Saturday night and twenty six lads showed up and they played a cracker of a game that led from the beginning. And speaking of dual players, we had a few lads there from the Owen, Niall Bonfil, Tomas Bonfil, um, and her cousin, um, who's just come into the ranks there, uh, Kieran Bonfil, and then along as, as as well as Conan Fitzgerald, uh, Kieran Curry. But it was so watching them. It was it was a pleasure to watch them. Some great hurling. The scoreboard was four eighteen to four oh five, four goals each. Now there was there was two goals were dropped in from sixty fives. Um, from from Kilnina, but it was a great game. I I I have to say, you now Kilkee, like you said, we talk about East Clare, but Kilkee wouldn't be a hurling town. And I know it's Junior C, but it was a great game to watch, and I was proud of the lads to see him there. And I wanted to, um, and Seamus, we were just talking about it probably there the other day. You, you'd know some of the lads that would be familiar with the with the uh, football climber boys playing there, but it, it wouldn't be no surprise that they pick up a stick and. Uh, there was some great stick, great hurling, great hurling there from them. Yeah, they, they, there's a lot of talented athletes on that, and I suppose you know uh, a lot of athletes kind of can become uh, efficient with every sport yeah. you know, when they play it. But I, I think it's huge for hurling that Kilkee but I won that game, not knocking Kilinina, but Kilinina is a hurling stronghold, you know, and I think that for the sake of the game and the spread of the game it's important to have a holding club going well in West Clare and you know, on this weekend in that same championship uh, Tlanbunny uh, will uh, will be in action you know and they're, and, and they're, they're Milltown based yep. and, and they'll, be, they'll be in action this week now our next is an is a, and sorry next week uh, they'll be in action in the, in, in the first round of, the, of that championship you know and that's something that they will be chasing they'll be chasing to try and they're playing the banner uh, yeah. for winners. Uh, and uh, obviously, San Bernie will be hoping that they can match what Kiki Bella have done. And who knows? Um, maybe the final of that championship will see those two West Clare clubs in opposition. But um, either way, it's important for the game of hurling. It's important for spreading the game uh, that um, teams are going well from those areas. Uh, you know, it was great. It was great to see that. And I, I, Conan Fitzgerald played a lot of underage hurling with Ken Maley. He's a talented hurler, mm. uh, you know, and he's a, he's from Kilkee. He's a big asset to his home club back there now. Mm. Uh, and I think he plays football with the club as well. And 
because uh, he had a big win in the Open Road of the Zona Football Championship. That's uh, right. Two weeks ago as, as well. And uh, you know, they're back in action in round two this week because it's all football this weekend. So, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's huge and it's great to see all these fellas uh, given the support. I suppose that was one of the things that Kilkee Belaha and Sean Bunny have struggled with over the years is getting the commitment and getting numbers. Mm. So it's great for what you say there to have 27 or 28 players yeah. uh, on the line and tagged out. And a win will do wonders for that to yeah. drive more on uh, and, you know, to get lads to, to, you know, commit and give a, give a, the, the commitment that's required. And it's, it's great for the people in charge, the people like Mick O'Neill, you yeah. know, who have been doing a lot of work to promote the game back there. Yeah. And Col- and uh, there in Colin Clahasy as well, who is now selector there and, and working with the lads as well. That was great. And um, I just need to pull you. I need to pull you on something there, uh, Adrian. Yes. You said it was only junior C. It doesn't matter what yeah. what grade you pull on a jersey for your club and you yeah. go and give it your best. It doesn't matter. I'm happy over that field watching under eight or. Mm. It doesn't matter what that, or, and I love watching the young fellow who mightn't be the best, he mightn't be the Tony Kelly or the John Condon, but he gives everything he has. And that's the beauty of our sport is that you get guys who they mightn't be the bright lights, but they're given, they, that's the guy you love. A general like they didn't always love somebody with character. He yeah. wasn't always about the best, the best or, or not. The other thing is, you've seen Clan Money, I, I, I've seen Ken Mehel do well in underage hurling, and then they, they, they drifted away. A number of years ago, uh, and today they did a lot of work. I think now it's time for the county board to get in there and and go to the Clown Bunnies and 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 go back to Kilkee Villaha and say, what do you need? How can yeah. we bring you forward? Exactly. What help do you need? You know, you, you and that's really what they need to do. It. There's no fear of Kilnina. Kilnina are a strong club, and 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 and, and they can take the you know. Uh, mm. Take care of themselves, really. I suppose you know, and and they have the they're in the, they're in the infrastructure, like if you like, for want of a better word. Um, Seamus, I while I have you here, I might go into this round of football this weekend, and if uh, I'll start you on that one, uh, before we go, you're going anyway in a few minutes, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Uh, I have to go. Uh, the huge, huge games this weekend. It's a, it's a massive weekend for a lot of the clubs. Uh, who need to win to stay to stay in the hunt? Yeah. Uh, you know, Saint Brecken's, uh, who would have been one of the teams tipped at the start of the year to be in the concluding stages, mm. were beaten in the opening round. So they find themselves that they must win against an up and coming Saint Joseph's Dora Bearfield side. Yeah. You know, who have a lot of young players, but who are going well. You know, they won their league, uh, Division Two, the Gary Cup, and they had a great first round win. Uh, in 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 the championship over a fancied Corrif inside, so there's a lot at stake there for Saint Brecken's. Uh, but Airog and Milltown, two teams that many would be tipping for ultimate honours, uh, and Airog going for three in a row, the hottest of favourites. Uh, they meet in Clare on Sunday. They're both uh, going in with a, a win to their credit uh, in, in in the opening round, you know. So. Uh, a win for either side there would see them progress to the knockout stage mm. uh, and would leave the others uh, a bit worried as to the, the outcome between Clandigat and Dunbeg, both of whom lost their first round games. And, uh, you know, the, they both need to win to get back into the hunt. Uh, Clandigat will probably be seen as the, a defensive side, uh, but they've struggled a bit in recent weeks. They had a great start to the league won their first three or four games in the league and yeah. then uh, fell back a little. You know, injuries have played a part there as well. They've lost a few players to injury. Um, and then in the, in, in the other group, uh, there's a lot to play for for the teams involved. Pretlo, after a first round win over this case, you can take on Kildaisert. Kildaisert must win. Uh, must win to... Well, they need a win to, to, to increase their chances of qualifying. Yeah, uh, having lost the first round. Same for Lisa Casey, who lost narrowly to Cratchit on the first round. They face Ennis Diamond, yeah. uh, who won the who won their opening game and who would be one of the teams that most people are tipping to be the likely team to cause most problems for your old this year. Yeah. You know, Ennis Diamond have loads of talent, have a lot of adult, a lot of adult players, but just to get the right. Get the right group on the day, I suppose, uh, is, is the issue for them. And they have injuries as well. They played the first round without 
both Killian and Brindy Rui and Jude Hendry. Mm. Uh, I don't know when they're due back. It, it may be another few weeks. Uh, but, uh, you know, they had Dave Fitzgerald, the, the, the Hurler came on at half time in that game and made a big impression. So it's likely that he'll start this week. That's it's the weekend off. That game is on Friday evening. It's the first of the of the six games. Yeah. And then you have, you have some great, potentially great games in the intermediate championship. Yeah. You know, uh, a not clear derby, neighbours in his time in the Liscanner, who for many years mm. were the one club playing under the headline or, or the name of St. Michael's. Now mm. they're meeting. Uh, and uh, it's a big game for them. Both lost their first round. So, you know, a, a, win, is, a win is very important for them. Uh, Kulmin had a great first round win. Many would say, many would say a little against the head, but they won. Mm. They now play in Avon, who won their first round game. You know, there's a, a great battle uh, likely there. Uh, Kulmin have had the Indian sign mm. over they won a bit in the past, so yeah. maybe they'll be hoping to, hoping to find it. Could a fair need to get back uh, in the in the race? So they'd be uh, expected to beat Kilfenora, who are struggling a little for numbers and yeah. who uh, the loss of Keane or D is massive to them. Yeah. He has immigrated and he would have been their key player. So he's a big loss. Kilrush and the Banner, two teams in one of the first round games. Kilrush, tipped by many now, is the likely winners of this championship. So, so there's a lot of state there. O'Curry's in Kilmehal. O'Curry's. Uh, surprisingly, lost their first round by seven points to to uh, Wolf Tones. They mm. faced Kilmahal, who were held to draw in their first round game. Yeah. You know, so um, that'll be an interesting game there, obviously. And then Wolf Tones uh, and Shannon Gales. Uh, you know, so there's an awful lot to play play for. And that's not even to mention the Junior A and Junior B and mm. Junior C championships, all of which will, will you know. Will, will, Produce their own excitement, so uh, it's it's a big weekend for football starting this evening uh, and running right through until Sunday evening. Yeah, it's going to be. It's, you, you couldn't possibly get to every game with everything going on, and like you said, every every game counts. Like Nicholas was saying earlier, even like he was capping on Junior C, whether it's football or hurling, both have um, both bring the best out of everybody, you know, they bring the best. And I think even more exciting junior C football and hurling can be a lot a lot more exciting than... Uh, yeah, definitely. And, you 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 know, you'd have to feel for the dual players, you know, because there's no break for them, you know. There's an yeah. awful lot of those players that are key to both hurling and football with their clubs. And, you know, you see it with the Aerobes and the Cratlers and the St. Joseph, Dora Bearfields, the straight dual clubs, as we call them. Uh, you know, you'll see those, they... This week past now up to this evening, up to today, they've been focusing on football. Mm. Once they play their game, they switch their attention to hurling for the coming week ahead of the next round of hurling, and then it's back to football and so on. So, you know, those fellas get no break, and you know you have to give great credit to to players in that situation. And then yeah. you have the play, you have player, the isolated players we call them, who you know play for their own club uh, in one of the courts, and then assist the neighbouring club uh, in the other court. Yeah, uh, you know, so there's a, there's a, there are big demands on these players, and there's a lot of time involved. But uh, you know, they do it, and there's people like us who see the benefits, I suppose, and get the enjoyment from watching the performances. So you know, there'll be big crowds, at, a, a, a variety of venues across the county now throughout the weekend. Uh, you know, and there's a lot, and there, there's a lot involved. I suppose it just highlights, and Nicholas has said this three or four times, the the importance of GA. Gaelic games to every parish. Yes. You know, it's a talking point in every parish. You know, all this past week, the talk has been about how your local parish is going to do this weekend. Yeah. And once the game is over, they're reviewing the game and then they're looking ahead to the following week and they'll look at various moments and hopefully there'll be no injuries. But if there are, there'll be concerns and less will be worrying about how soon these fellas can get back. Um, it, it's, just a, it, it's just a massive commitment all around. I saw it down uh, yesterday. Uh, we travelled down to Simple Stadium, or travelled up to Simple Stadium with uh, a bunch of under eleven Kilkee lads to play hurling blitz, which I played three ga- three games. And when you walked in there, it was the the crowds of kids. It was it was unbelievable. It was the excitement they had. They're up there. I, I, as I said to some of the kids that had come from Kilkee, I said. No, there it wasn't six weeks ago you played a blitz in Cusick Park and now you're at Simple Stadium. I said back in my day, going back a long time, that 
the only way you'd have gotten it into simple stadiums if you had a clear jersey on and you were playing there for or or uh, playing for your your club, you know, in a serious game, it wouldn't have been there wouldn't have been had those opportunities for kids. But it's it's you could see their faces when they were going out there and the excitement and it was it was they had three games, three blitz games going on at the same time on the pitch, and a great turnout too as well and. Um, it was just exciting, you know, to travel up on the bus, and and it's great for them too because they're it's their someday it'll be their turn, but they feel it now, and you can see them. They, they they to them it's very important as well. They may be little kids, and there was talks at one time of removing competition for I think it was under twelve, but if there was any proof that you can't do that, that was yesterday in Simple Stadium. It was unbelievable. I talked to many officials, and that was one of the topics down there was that this is so important for these kids to be able to have their time because in their heads they want to be heard and they want to they want to be seen and and they live by the hurley of these lads these young lads and there was some amazing talent and some all stars are going to come out of that you see that too nicholas you like that that's just inspired me what you said about the junior c you know um and um it it i saw that yesterday you know yeah absolutely yeah yeah it's all about it's all about playing and participating and, you know, it's an old cliche, it's not about winning, it's about playing the game. And I, I, I believe it is, you know, winning is great and you have to win to, you know, obviously to stay there. Mm. You have to have your big days, but you have your down days as well. But it, it's all about wearing that jersey. Yeah. You know, that's what the GAA has that, no, I, I, not too sure that too many other countries in the world would have something as, as almost sacred as the GAA, that everyone can compete boys and girls from under six to to over 40. You can put on that jersey. You can be part of your community. You can play for your community. You know, we, we, we play for the love. I, you know, it was always, as a young lad growing up, you wanted to play for your, for your club. Yeah. And when you got that jersey, you were proud to put it on. You know, yeah. it's not about money. I hope it never becomes about money. There's an awful lot of money in the GAA. And there's an awful lot of uh, people making big money out of the GA. But I hope the players hold on to the, the you know, the, 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 the want to play for your club and your county, you know. And, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, you know, when I went to London uh, I, back in the 80s, I joined the club there, like, and you wanted to play for that club as well, like, you wanted to play, you had friends, I had friends from all over the country on yeah. that team, like, you know, I wanted to play. Wholeheartedly, you 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 never lost the, the touch from home. Like you always waited to get the Clare Champion. Seamus kept us all informed when we were in England. We were couldn't wait to get the Clare Champion. We could buy it in Kilburn and we could read up on what happened at the weekend. Like you know, because there was no social media back then. Like, but you wanted to play for that club as well. Like the club you joined as well. Like because it was our common bond with Ireland. It was home mm-hmm. for the diaspora. It's fierce and important. The, the common bond we have all over the world it, with sport. I can walk into a bar in New York or a bar in London or a cafe and mm. I can I can immediately I can immediately sit down and talk to people from Tyrone or from Manhattan or from Cork or Kerry or wherever it is like you know and that's the then we have the common bond and that's what really has you know you know we're we're united we, we know what's happening almost in Melbourne and in and we what's happening in New York, San Francisco, what's happening in London. Canada, we hear from our people that have gone out there, and 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 they, and we get the reports back. They're still playing the game, and they're playing it in Germany, France, everywhere. No, like so, it's yeah. a, it's about playing for your jersey, like whatever, wherever part of the world you're in, playing for that jersey that you've been given for that club, like in that parish, and that that identity you have, like you know, yeah. that you, you bring that with you wherever you go. Now, Seamus, do you have to go, do you? Yeah, I gotta go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can I can let you out there. Exit you there if you want, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say goodbye to you there anyway. Um, uh, thanks for coming on the okay. show. See you, Shibbs. No problem. We'll talk to you, lads. We'll talk Great. to you too. Okay, I know, but um, yeah, as you said earlier, you said for, for the over 40s, we might as well throw in the over 50s too because there's. I I I might on some capacity throw a jersey on Saturday night, even if I was just in the in the dugout cheering them on. But to was to yeah. be part well, of it. It doesn't matter if it doesn't matter what age you are, because even if you're not playing, you're still part of the 
the journey for your club, like in your county, yeah. and it's still you're still in there. You're still you're st- you know you hit every ball with them. Let's like you know you yeah. you've, that's that's the way it is. It's like they 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 all Ireland last last weekend. We were all we I've kicked every ball with them, like you know what I mean. So that's you see the clear jersey go out into Crow Park, like it's uh, it's an amazing thing, sight, whatever it does, to see that jersey going out there, to see the, the saffron and, and, and blue, it's just, uh, it's, it just does something for us, like, you know, so. On Wednesday. To the girls, like, you know. And when, yeah, and I was just, you were talking about Crow Park on Wednesday evening, um, it was late in the evening, my young lad sat down beside me, my 10 year old, and, uh, I put on, I was thinking to myself, no, he's at the age now where he really uh, understands the hurling and, and what it's part, what it's like to put on a clear jersey. So I played him the last 10 minutes of the 1997 All-Ireland final and uh, yeah. James O'Connor, yeah. and, and he was blown away. He said, he goes, he said, did, did he just win? I said, no, no, this was a long time ago, but I wanted to show yeah. you what it's like when Clare win. Yeah, and yeah. he was glued to it. He thought well, they were brilliant, you know, and I yeah. said, I said there was the Tony yeah. Kellys of the day. There was Ollie Baker, Oliver Baker, Ollie, Ollie was kind of in, and James Ian. Um, yeah. and it was great to watch it though. But, um, but it, it yeah, sometimes to... sometimes I see clips of the of the eighty five and eighty seven thing on 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 on, um, on Facebook or yeah. on YouTube, and, and you 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 click on it again, and you know you nearly you you nearly want to, um, to you know. Aim and have score. You're 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 nearly as excited as as the moment when he scored exactly, the goal. Yeah. But you watch it again. You see yeah. the ball hitting back in the net, and and I it's I'm still, you know, it's like it just gives you that lift again. Like you see that, you know, to see and see Daly putting the ball over the bar from the you know taking the sixty five. Even you know what's going to happen. It's going to hit the post. That Aim and Taff has got to bury it. You're still. That that's still you know, it. Always music, like so. You, you could, I, I look back all the time. Like I look back at my own club, man. Fergal Hegarty put the ball over the bar and all that. And finally, I mean, yeah. for any young fella like, to see their club men doing that, I was older than Fergal Hegarty when he did that, and I was excited as a five-year-old. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, that's that's that they're the special moments. That's what's special about the GA. Yeah, you know, our heroes are just the regular. Fergal Hagerty over the road here for me. He's a regular guy. He's you know great, great, great guy. Like you know, and for him to be your your, your hero for that for that all Ireland, like you know, and for so many people, and the Colin Lynch's, the 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 the, 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 the mm-hmm. Tony Kelly's, the, the John Connor, they're our heroes. Like you know, yeah. I'm way older than them guys, and I look up to them. Like you know what I mean? I just yeah. and my, and my son, my yeah. son heard the name Brian Lohan being mentioned as they were playing, and he said, "Is that?" Is that the same bright? I said, yeah. Well, he had to say yeah, he came from somewhere. So that <laughs> he made that connection. Then he's understanding that, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the yeah. the Brian Lowens and and the the Cody's and them like they they came from yeah. somewhere, you know, and they all they all I, had the days yeah. shine. Yeah, I see John Cummins there. He's a farmer. He won an Isle with with Galway and goals, and he's a salesman. He's often down in us there. You'd often see him on Monday going. About his business sake, and he talks and he stands, he stops talking to people. And if you yeah. said anything about you, know, he stops and talks to you. Like, you yeah. know, I love them guys, like, you know, they're they're great promoters of the game because they're, they're just they're the ordinary he's a salesman. Like, and this yeah. guy is an all Ireland winner in his pocket. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The farmers, the, you know, they were everyday people. And yet, when they went up to Crow Park or down to down to Turles or, or over to Cusick Park, they were. They were, you know, they, they were stairs, like, you know, really yeah. were stairs. But they don't behave as stairs. They behave yeah. as normal people. Another thing that the GA gives that no other country can give, I believe, um, and I may be wrong, but somebody can argue that one, but when you, I, and it was a tourist that said it to me, so, for example, in America, they, they'd have stars as well. So there's no way a child is going to be able to stand outside a dress room and the the, the, the stars. So, like, for example, at Cusick Park, my young lad stand outside Tony Kelly and he same there when they played against Ina Kilnona up in Shannon, uh, all these young lads out there and they were going, they could they had a pick of the crop and the lads came over and they were delighted. And and they were heading off. They might be heading off now to, to their families or whatever, a cup of tea, and they weren't heading off to get into their Maseratis or anything. They, they this was their this is their life, you know, and to, they give that. And you don't get that in other countries. With the GA, you get that because that's why being a sport, these lads being amateur, and I think it keeps them grounded and connected 
to the people. That's why they're doing it. It's for those little kids and yeah. for, their, for an 80 year men, an 80 year old an 80 year old man that might have to make a journey into Cusick Park from the country to see his team. It's for them too, you know. Um but uh, no, I agree with you there. It's it's uh, yeah. from, especially from somebody who's been lived away from Ireland for decades, um, coming back and not having uh, not what was it put. I, I have a, I have a brother in San Francisco, and he knows more about what's happened here in the game mm. than, than I do. You know that's how interested they are. Like yeah. he absolutely was home recently, and and I was trying yeah. to inform him about a few things, but I, uh, sadly uh, he was informing me. <laughs> he knew more about the game, and I I remember telling him about something. Yeah, he says I know. He said I saw it. Like you know, so well, they watch all the videos and all the lectures, and uh, it was you know, so. There was a yeah. time when I was abroad, you wouldn't have been able to that. You might have had somebody to organize this channel that was called Satenta, and they had to put the money together and find a pub. And at eight o'clock in the morning, we had tea and instead of pints, we had tea and sausages to watch in All Ireland, you know, um, somewhere in the middle of Minneapolis. Um, yeah. That was how we did it, right? We, but we wouldn't have been able to watch we it. Saw, we saw a guy, Kilburn Highland, with a transistor radio, and he had the, he had the aerial onto a steel lamppost. To oh. see what if it would, would improve, and his ear to the radio, and uh, anyone, an Englishman person would say this: this guy needs to be taken to hospital immediately. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that's how much he wants to take that's a amazing. result from Ireland. Like, you know, he wants yeah. to hear the game. So, doesn't I want? Back in the days with you know there was no yeah. digital, no nothing, so very hard to, to you know. I, I'm Pascal Daly, God rest his soul, and see Daly's brother. He was a bit, uh, we were great friends in England. He told me that he rang home. Uh, his mother put the phone to the radio so as he could hear the radio when Anthony made his, I think it was maybe his debut game or one of the championship games for Clare anyway. And, you know, he was telling me, I, I think the brewery might have picked up the tab, but, you know, that's how much it meant. And and for a full hour there, he was listening to the, his phone and getting the getting the uh, getting the, the, the commentary of the match and his brother playing. Like, you know, I, you know, I remember him telling me that. It's just... just Fantastic story, really. Like that, he would go to that link to get to, to get to, to hear the game. Oh yeah, it's just, I, I, yeah, their memories are right, especially especially being abroad, trying to find information and information, and you had to either get a hands and OP newspaper or just get on the phone. Is what I did. Just just start ringing around. Yeah. And, you know, what, yeah. What's going on? You know, Ambrose, Ga Ambrose Garden. Uh, he was from Portum and uh, that I he was from Portum and he was up that neck of the woods. He, he was playing with the Gables, he was the Gables Club in London, and he was the first man back in the 80s. He used to yeah. get the videos sent out to London. He would collect them at Heathrow Airport, distribute them that night to all the Irish pubs around North, London, uh, North and South London. And yeah. you were at 8 o'clock that night, and you were hoping somebody wouldn't give you the result if you didn't know, you know, so you could watch the game and, and you, you could watch the match. You know, it was a great service. You know, Ambrose was a kind of a, an entrepreneur, like, yeah. you know, into an entrepreneur, like, and you know, that's that's what it was like back then. Like, it's now it's instant. Yeah, they want to see it in their phone before the game is over. They want to hear the interviews on the way out of the match. Like, you know, it's, yeah. uh, it's the way it's got. We had to wait till Monday evening sometimes to watch those games. You mm -hmm. know, if the video was late or whatever, it might be Monday evening. You go down to watch the match. It was all part of it. Like, you know, and that's yeah. the way it was done. And I think what was interesting for me being abroad was if we did find. Um, an Irish pub in Minneapolis that would uh, broadcast a game but well, they had to pay big money back then I think it was through Satanta yeah. remember um, you're talking about like two, 1999 2000 um, but you wouldn't be sitting in there with clear people you'd be in there with everybody yeah. there'd be a lad from Kilkenny Dublin we're all over and we all right, had, yeah. we all had to be there as one you know we, we all had yeah. different jerseys on and we all we were there for the sport yeah. we were there for the I watched the 1988 all, um, all Ireland final. I think it was 88 uh, All Ireland final. I watched it in in in, in the audience in Hammersmith. Wow. You know, so you know, you went down, you paid your whatever five, ten, whatever it was that time, like you know, mm. and the place was full, like you know, and yeah, it's great big screen and it was great, it was great atmosphere, you know, and really enjoyable, like so, just you know. That, that's what you had to do. The Satenta was great when they came in because mm. the Pope's could at least you could go down to the pub to watch the game live then and stuff like that. Like so. And did you have to pay? Did you have to all put in the pool to pay for the broadcast? Is what we did anyway in America. Well, 
uh, the, in the Hammersmith Odeon was done by the Hammersmith Odeon in conjunction with the GA, I presume. You had to pay at the door running, like whatever, I think it was £10 or whatever at the time. But uh, in the pub is no, the pub, the publicans paid because you went down and you drank your fill and they got their yeah. return that way. They got to be crowd down on a Monday night, which would be quite nice. Otherwise, but it got everyone down to the pubs. So, yeah. uh, only a select few pubs as well, like, you know, not every pub showed the game. Like, you knew where to go, like the back line or yeah. Billy Mulligans or whatever, like, you know. And, and uh, we all gathered and watched the game and we had a really crack. And that was, we were young, the time we could do it back to work Tuesday morning. We, we were able for it. But uh, that was a great thing, like, you know. I remember when I played my club in London, you go to the clubhouse, you went out and, and you hurled a hard game against the Gabriels or the Pierces or whoever. Uh, you went back in and 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 you joined the fellas you were playing with, yeah. and, and inside the clubhouse and and the fellas you played against, yeah. and and it was left out in the field and and that was the way we had a great social scene, maybe be too great for some people, but it was it's not in the game as much now that that uh, that bond as well after the game where we where we all made up boyfriends girl the girlfriends the wives the whole lot. We were all in one big family, like, and we met up and we stayed together and we ended the night together, you know. Um, so that, that 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 was huge, like, that was huge. Like those friends I have today, like, I have friends in Watford, Tipperary, Cork, Galway, all over that I hurled with, and I hurled against as well. I, I bump into them all the time when I got to matches, like, and we we we've stayed in touch, like, you know. And Facebook is brilliant that way we could stay in touch with lads and. Uh, great, great memories. Uh, some of the memories now we we could we can't we couldn't share on radio in fairness. Like, some, of the, <laughs> some of the stuff we got up to, but it was all harmless. Like, and yeah. we lived through a great era. That time in London, I'm sure it was the same in New York. But there was a great bond. We got up to great temperament. No harm done. Nobody got hurt ever. We had great times, and the the GA was the centre of our life at that stage, and yeah. it still remains for most of us. You know. I I um I remember I worked when I first went to America. I worked for a police department, and uh, I remember bringing the hurley in to show the lads because I wanted to put it into the boot of the squad car. And uh, you know, you want to if you were pull somebody over, you'd have to use the hurley to poke around so you wouldn't get anything in your hands. You know, I didn't want to be sticking my hands into anybody's boot in their car if I was. But I remember they asked me, "What is that? Like that's a weapon?" And I said, "No, no, that." And yeah. I had to explain it to him. It was unreal. But another thing too. Um, that I noticed that happened to me Saturday night. That now it was the last time I played hurling was uh, it would pull on a jersey in Ireland would have been um, when I played for Bally as a young lad, like a tiny little kid, like you know. But um, but I mostly have had cycling my whole life, you know, and it's a different community and a different environment. Uh, but for a Saturday night, I was telling one of the lads, I said, um, when we were down at Kilmaley, you know, throwing on the jersey and being in the in the dressing room beforehand and listening to the speech, yeah, I I was able to res- have a lot more respect um, and insight to what goes on in the GA coming from a cycling world because I spent most of my life cycling because it's a different, but to have them two sports and, and to think about it and feel it at the same time because I still cycle, still involved in cycling, yeah, yeah, yeah. now I'm involved in a hurling club. I, I was, because some lads would only stick to hurling and they might play football, but it's not where you're going from two separate sports are completely different. And I found hurling more of a, there's more, uh, you know, more friendship there. You've, you've so many lads and you're very, you're very connected. You know, it is, yeah. I'm not saying cycling wouldn't be, but, um, you know, cycling can be more of a lonely sport and dangerous, obviously, yeah. as we heard what happened this weekend. Um, but um, there's a man killed there in, in, in Kilkee, but, but but on the field it was different, you know. I, mean, I enjoyed it more with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that comradeship was there. The the cycling, I would presume. No, I wasn't a cyclist, but I would presume it was more a, of a a lonely or sport. Not lonely, but you were on your own. Yeah. I would imagine that your focus was with yourself. Whereas in, in a team, in a team sport, you mm. you're looking to your you you you're going to get the inspiration from your from your teammates, and, and if you if yeah. you're down, they'll pick you up, and if you're up, they'll They'll bring you back down if you know what I mean. Like, and um, you know, but that's the thing tra- traveling through London with a, with a hurley, like uh, you could be in the tube with, with, a, with, a, with a hurley, and you get a few strange looks. Like, mm. I remember one time I had to get uh, a couple of stitches after a game, I didn't wear a helmet, and uh, well, you didn't have to at the time, but uh, I, I remember going down to the Royal Free Hospital in Hammersmith, and uh, it was a, it was an Indian doctor 
who treated me and uh, he said to me, what, uh, what happened to you? He said, so I told him that he got a bit of a hurley leg. So he, you, you, you what is hurley? He, uh, you know, I was trying to explain a bit like, like oh, he said, the mad Irish game. He said, well, you, <laughs> you know, that's what he's in interpretation of <laughs> whatever he had seen on, on, uh, on television or whatever, like, you know, so it, it, uh, that's what you were listening to as well, like, was, uh, you know, yeah, it is. It is like I was saying to a man in Simple Stadium. I said, um, I've traveled a lot. I've been when I was living in America, I wouldn't see too many sports for kids at this level that's so in that keeps their fitness up because they are out in the pitch and it's a fast moving game and it's great for the kids as well. You know, even in today's world where the, the diets and the environment wouldn't be um, as healthy as it would have been, obviously, it wouldn't be as healthy as it was 30 years ago. But it's still, it's, it's, we need it. Like we need that. We need hurling and football for the kids because yeah. if we lose that. We, um, we, we had a team from, from New York in, in the, here up in the field in Ireland there, the Ireland Kilowana Club. Uh, hmm. There last week, uh, you know, in under, in underage team, they played a game of hurling rock boats from, from New York and they played a, a game of hurling, a game of football hmm. uh, against the Ireland Kilowana. And it was most enjoyable, but the skill level of those, was amazing, you know, their second third generation Irish. Yeah. You know, and it was just fantastic to see. And yeah. you know, I was talking to them after as well, like and how they you know, they have the same problems as as ourselves and they have the same joy as ourselves and they have the same passion as ourselves, like, you know. Yeah. And uh, there are people who need to be backed up as well because, you know, the president of, of the association can give great speeches, but you need to follow that up and he's he's based in New York, so he needs to bring something to to New York, like to yeah. to keep the game alive and keep it well. But it was a great experience and great to see them and the passion that they knew for this boys and girls show. It was just uh, brilliant. Yeah, you know, it was a great night, great evening. Well, listen, I let you go. Um, thanks okay, very much. Talk All to right. you. Okay. See you next week. Take it easy. Keep the keep a country. Keep a country. Yeah. <laughs>